Hey guys, my name is Ben and welcome back to another bucket plugin tutorial. And in this episode we're going to be looking at FTP stuff. So connect to FTP servers and and then, you know, go on the FTP and downloading files and uploading files to FTP stuff. So yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new class um to make to you know clear all up. So we're gonna call it FTP client. Uh like that. And we're just gonna make this new class and it's gonna be a normal class and we're gonna have to make a few variables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a private URL. I'm gonna call this um uh, URL, URL connection. So that's our object. It's going to be a URL connection object, and we're going to call it client. Uh, we're going to want to make a private string, which is going to be our host name. Uh, we're going to want to make a private string, which is going to be our username. Like that. We're going to want to make a private uh, string. Oh, sorry about my typing. I'm, I can't really see my keyboard very well. <laughs> uh, private string. Uh, I can't reach my keyboard very well, sorry. And we're going to call this the uh, remote uh, remote file. So the file that's actually you know on the server. I'm going to call this. We're going to make another variable. I'm going to call it say private string. And I'm going to say error. And then we're going to say private uh, string and success. So we're going to make all these variables, and then we're going to make a constructor like so. So let's make our first constructor, which is going. Wait, actually. No, we don't want a constructor. Oh, we could have a constructor. So we're going to have public um, FTP client, and in here we're going to take the uh, the host, uh, the username, uh, uh, the uh, and the password. Which I suppose we don't we don't really. Um, did I make a password variable? I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Uh, private string password goes there. Yes, yeah, a password. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot host equals host. Uh, this dot username equals username. So this is just so when we make the object, um, you know, we're going to pass all these variables into the the class and and such. So now we're just going to want to make some uh, getter and setter objects. So we're going to make a public void set host, and then we're going to say string host because we want to set have a host inside that so then we're going to say this dot host equals host and we're going to do this a few more times for like the um the user so public void set user string username this this dot username equals username like so uh, and then public uh void set password string password and then we're gonna say this dot password equals password. So what these are doing is when we call these methods in the game, not in the game, in the uh, code, they are going to just you know redo our objects for us, and they're gonna they're gonna sort our objects. Oh, we got one more to do. Uh, so public void set remote uh, file string file, uh, and then remote file equals file like that. Um, cool. So we're now going to want to return, get some of these return messages for the error and success things. So we're going to say um, public synchronized uh, string get uh, suc success msg. So get success message. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, and then we're just going to say if success message or success is equal to nothing uh, then or if success is not equal to nothing then we're going to say return success and then we can just say return null like that now we're going to copy this um, and paste this here and change this to err and here we're going to change success to error I cannot type. It's cold outside. You see, my fingers are all—they're all cold and and not typeable. Okay, so the reason we got synchronized is because we're going to be—we might. There's a possibility we're going to be calling it, you know, at the same time as we're calling another method. So we want to make sure that you know it's going to be all synchronized. And you can read up on it, um, but it's quite hard to explain in the in the time that I have. So what we're now going to do is we're going to make another synchronized method. So public synchronized boolean upload file to the uh, file location to 
the server. So we're going to make that, and we're going to upload it to you know the, the stream at the file location. It's going to return a true or false uh, thingy. <laughs> so here we're going to make a try and uh, catch exception e e dot print stack trace like so, just so we have you know stuff there to to do. And as you know, we're, we're going to print the stack trace. We're going to do other, some of the uh, error handling. So to do this, we're going to make an input stream of the so input stream is equals new file input stream from the local file name which is file location like that uh, so we're gonna make an input stream so we're gonna that's allowing us to open a stream from the uh, from the file uh, straight into our code and then we're gonna make a buffered uh, buffered input stream uh, I'm going to call this BIS, so buffered input stream equals new buffered input stream from the input stream. So this is going to use, uh, it's going to input it from the memory instead of from, you know, whatever else it inputs it from the processor power. And now we're going to make an output stream. So output stream OS equals client dot get output stream. Like so. Um, at the moment, the client doesn't equal anything. We're going to make that method in a second when we connect. Uh, and now we're going to want to say buffered. Uh, buffered output stream boz equals new buffered output stream from the output stream so we're going to use it from memory instead um, now we're going to make a byte array and I'm going to call this buffer so this is how much is going to buffer through each time and it's going to be equal to a new byte which is going to uh, be 124 which is going to symbolize the amount of uh, megabytes it's going to send through so that's one um, that's that's one gigabyte I believe. No, what, one megabyte? That's one megabyte. Yes. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out sometime. You can look it up. <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. That's, uh, that's embarrassing. 124 megabytes. It's a gigabyte. Yeah, so anyway. But it means bytes. So it's 124 bytes. It's going to buffer through each time. And we're going to make an int uh, count. Uh, and we're going to say, whilst the uh, count is equal to uh, the buffered input stream dot read the buffer so we're going to read the amount of buffers you know from from the buffer yeah whilst that returns or whilst that returns greater than zero we are going to say buffered output stream dot write and we're going to write the buffer um, and the offset is going to be zero and the read count is going to be the count Oh, sorry, so the length is going to be the count because you know we're counting it up. We don't need these brackets, these parentheses, these these braces there because you know it's only a one thing. It's only like a still statement. And then we're going to close the buffered output stream. So boz dot close after that loop has been executed. And then the success message now is going to be equal to uploaded, uploaded like that. So all that's doing is that's writing out to the server uh, that stuff, and we're going to return true. Now, if it fails, what we want to do is we want to make a string writer, and we're going to call this string writer, uh, and that's equal to a new string writer, and we're going to want to make a print writer, uh, print writer, and we're going to call this pw, and that's going to be equal to a new, um, a new print writer, and that's going to print out to the um, string writer and it's going to auto flush so we don't need to flush it when it closes uh, now we're going to say error dot print stack trace into the print writer where p2 print writer and then we're going to say the error is equal to the uh, string writer i'm going to get the buffer and then we're just going to send it we're going to convert to a string and then return false like so so that's how we're going to handle our errors which is going to print it out to the server as well oh no not to the server we're going to print it out to our console like so so now we've done that method what we want to do is we want to make our method to download our file um, which is going to be very similar to the one above so let's just make this so public uh, synchronized I didn't know that was a thing <laughs> synchronized uh, boolean download file string file location uh, now what we're going to do is we're sort of going to copy what we already have um, up here all these variables 
Um, I don't even know if we use this. Or, oh, we need to add the suppress warnings. We don't need to, but it, it's best to. And up here, we can add the suppress warnings and, you know, just input everything. That's... We need to make a try and catch around it all. So try... Catch. That was my phone. Exception E. And then leave that for now. So in here, what we want to do is very much the, the same as up here. We need to make a counting variable. And I'm going to tidy this up a bit, so let's just um, go down there and let's single that out. And we still need this buffer here. So once it's written all of that, um, I'm just thinking that's the input stream. And we've made this stream. Because this looks very, very similar um, to to the previous one. I'm trying to try and th look at what's different here. Um, oh, phone. Okay, um, this looks different. This shouldn't be here. Oh, I see, because with the upload file, we're actually using the client, and we don't want the client. So with the output stream this time, we're just going to say it's um, a new file output stream uh, to the file location because um, we don't really want to use our client at all uh, and we want to add you know more warnings to this because it's a resource I think that looks about about right but for this one because we want to get the uh, yes because we want to get the um, actual file from the client we want to in the input stream say client dot gets input stream like so there you go and then down here, it's basically just exactly the same. So we're going to close the buffered um, output stream. And then we're going to close the FTP input stream. So that's the uh, IS. And then we're going to say success message equals downloaded. Downloaded. Like so. So that's... Oh, shut up. <laughs> and then we're going to return true. Like so. Um, and then we can scroll down. Now, in our exception area, we want to do exactly the same thing. <laughs> so copy all of this and paste that there. So now we have our error handling. So now what we want to do is we want to make our connect method. So let's do that. So public uh, synchronized. So what this does is it, it connects us to the server. Uh, it's going to return a boolean. And we're just going to call it connect. Um, and we're going to try. And we're going to catch the exception E. And here we're going to do the same thing as we did up before. Like that. Cool. So here we're going to make a URL. Um, we're going to call this just URL. And it's going to be equal to a new URL. And now we have to enter what the URL will be should it be an FTP site. So what an FTP site is, is it's FTP colon slash slash. And then it's we got it's plus the username, so we plus the user, and then we have a colon. So this is how it looks in browser. And then plus after that is the password. And then after this we have the host name. So it, it's it's the user. Oh, it's, I, did, I put I just put user didn't I? Username plus password, which I spelled wrong. At the host dot. Um, well, not done anything. So at the host uh, slash, and then we got to find the file. So remote um, remote file uh, plus, and then there's a semicolon type equals i. So that's just sort of the the um, easiest way to explain it. Really is just it's saying it's the encryption type thing. So what this is doing is it's just connecting us to the FTP site with the username and password. So it's connect correct. Uh, and then here we want to say that the client equals url dot open connection and then we're going to return true like so so that is it for our ftp client class uh we might want to clear up a few resource errors not errors um here there we go uh so that's that done now in our game class or whatever class we have before i'm gonna show you how to actually use this so if we make it on our on enable or something you know wherever you want it wherever you want to download a file from to actually download the file, we're going to make a new instance of the FTP class. So FTP client, FTP equals a new FTP client. And then we can actually make just a, 
a blank constructor. So FTP client like that. So let's make a blank constructor as well. So we can just sort of have nothing there. Like so. Like that. So we've got a new instance of the class. Now what we do is we say FTP dot set host. Now I'm just gonna I don't I'm gonna change it after this when we test it, just for you know, whatever, but I'm not telling my actual password and stuff. So the host we can say, you know, just host. So that that will be like, you know, um, uh, for the bat night, it would be the bat night.com. That would all it would be. That's all you need to put. So for it would be the pcbros.com. It would not have www. or whatever. It would just be like um, google.com. Stuff like that. So I'm just going to say host name here. Uh, and then we say uh, ftp.set password. And here goes the password. <laughs> um, and that is, you know, your password that you use for your FTP. If you don't know that, contact the person who manages your FTP stuff. So FTP dot set user. So you should have users who can access your FTP things. So, you know, username would go here. And then FTP dot set remote file. So the file that I want to download would be um, players in my server. Or I don't know. Players. Players dot or players dot text or something. Um, and then we can say if FTP dot connect. So if it does connect successfully, uh, then we want to say also if FTP dot um, download file from. Um, well, this is where we want to save it to. So I suppose we'd say a new file at get data folder. So that's our you know our where it is in our plugin name directory, uh, and then comma players dot text. Uh, and then we want to get the actual path of this. So dot. Uh, wait, let's just import file from java.io file. So when I say dot get path. So if that is successful as well, uh, we're just going to say system dot out out dot print line, and we're going to print out ftp dot last or get success message. And then here we can just say else. And then copy this line like so, and then say else again, and then paste that line again, because those else correspond to that's the first if that's the that's that else corresponds to if it doesn't connect to the server, and then that doesn't connect to there. So we want to change this to err for error, um, err like so. So that's it. Um, that's all that we do. We would go to our FTP that I've set up here, and it would find the players.txt file, and it would download it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change up the uh, info, and yeah, I'll be right back. Here's some back. Um, as you can see here, I have the plugin installed. If I just refresh my FTP, nothing's there. If I restart my server, um, so I'm actually in an FTP client looking at. Imagine these are your local files. Um, so if I actually just you know restart, refresh my uh, listings, you see we have this new folder. Um, and in here is the scores, and that's where I downloaded it from. I downloaded the scores for the minor core stuff. Uh, so in here, we have all the scores of the people, and that was downloaded from the file. Uh, similarly, similarly, sim similarly, 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 <laughs> if I wanted to download a file, if I wanted to upload a file, I would change download file to upload file. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.